The Fed has been hiking interest rates for the past several months. The Fed at its November meeting announced that it would increase its target Fed funds effective rate by 75 basis points or 0.75% to a range of between 3.75 to 4%. Let's see how you can make money with this hike. Let me know in the comments if you've already thought about this. Hi there, I'm Avanti. I'm a mom, an investment analyst, and a CFA charter holder. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow my Facebook page to learn how you can build wealth through investing. The Fed Fund's effective rate was near zero at the beginning of this year, and now it is close to 4% in November of 2022. This is the average rate banks pay for borrowing money overnight. You know how banks function, right? At the most basic level, they take deposits from people like you and me and loan money to people and businesses, earning a profit in the process. And they're required by central banks like the Fed to maintain a certain level of daily cash reserves. If the level of cash reserves falls below this requirement, banks have to borrow money from other banks. The federal fund's effective rate is the average rate banks have to pay to borrow money from other banks overnight. This is a very short term interest rate. The Fed raises this rate to make it expensive to borrow money. A desired outcome for the Fed is to curb inflation. When this rate increases, it starts to indirectly affect other kinds of short-term interest rates, such as treasury yields. Let's look at treasury bills. I had discussed T-bills or treasury bills in this video, where I talked about all kinds of investment options and risks. In case you missed the video, check it out by clicking the link above. This is the treasurydirect.gov website. As you can see, there are bills with maturities ranging from 4 weeks to 52 weeks. Let's look at the interest rates for T-bills from a recent auction. The investment rate a 17-week T-bill earns is 4.423%. Let's look at what this rate means. When you invest money in a US Treasury bill, you are giving the government, the United States government, your money. And at maturity, which is at the end of the term of the T-bill, the government returns your money with interest. The total amount that you get back from the government is called the par value. If what I just said makes no sense, don't worry. Just remember, what you get back at maturity is the par value. What you pay to buy T-bills is the issue price, which is at a discount to the par value. So the difference between what you get and what you pay is the interest the government gives you. So let's say you invested in this 17 week T-bill with a high rate of 4.300%. This is the formula for how your issue price is determined. The way you would calculate the discount is by taking the high rate multiplying it by 119 days to maturity, which is seven times, seven days in a week multiplied by 17, and dividing it by 360, and then subtracting that amount from one. And when you multiply the discount by the par value, you get the amount that you would pay for these T-bills, which in this case is 0 0.9857861 times the par value. You don't have to calculate this. The discount is determined at auction, and when you see the auction results, you will know what the discount is. But I just wanted you to be aware of how it is calculated. The reason we use 360 instead of 365 is because many short-term securities use 30-day months. So they just use 30 multiplied by 12, which is 360. So now let's see what this means for you. If you buy a 17-week T-bill with par value of $1,000, you would pay $985.78 for it. At the end of 17 weeks, you would get $1,000 back, making you $14.21 in interest. Now, it may not seem like a lot of money, but it is scalable. And you can use some strategies to take advantage of these great T-bill rates. And I'm going to discuss a few strategies 
that you can employ. Also note, these T-bills are low risk. They are backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government. Unless the US government starts defaulting on its debt, you should be able to get the par value back at maturity. There is no risk of default. There is, however, interest rate risk. Now let me show you some of the best rates in CDs or certificates of deposit according to bank rate. The highest rate I see here is 4.1% for a two-year term and 4% for a one-year term. Remember, if you invest in a CD, your money is locked for the term of the CD, unless you pay a penalty for early withdrawal. A T-bill, on the other hand, is highly liquid. And even if you wait until maturity, the maturity is not as long as these CD terms. If you want to learn about a simple ladder strategy for T-bills, stay tuned. Note that this strategy is not for everyone. You need to do your own research to determine if it meets your investment objectives and suits your risk profile as an investor. Evaluate your investment plan to determine if this is right for you. If you don't have an investment plan, you can watch this video to learn how to make it. I have also linked my personal template in the description. Before I go into a strategy you can use in your own portfolio, please give me some love by hitting that like button and share this video with one person who may get some value out of it. And if you're new here, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. If you are watching me on Facebook, don't forget to follow my page. And please comment below what you like and what you want to hear more about in my future videos. And if you want to learn how to invest in the stock market, don't forget to watch this free course on the basics of stock market investing for beginners with zero financial background. I want to discuss a few strategies you can employ, but let's look at the pros and cons of owning a T-bill first. As I mentioned before, T-bills have zero default risk. The interest income generated from a T-bill is exempt from state and local taxes. T-bills are highly liquid. You can buy and sell them on the secondary market and you don't have to hold them until maturity. You can buy them through your brokerage or directly from treasurydirect.com. The minimum investment is only $100. Now let me tell you about one con of T-bills in today's rising interest rate environment. T-bills carry interest rate risk. What that means is if you're holding on to a T-bill that pays an interest rate of say 3% and another T-bill with the same maturity is issued at a higher interest rate next week, say with an interest rate of 3.25%, the one you're holding becomes less valuable. You can sell the one that you're holding to buy the newly issued one, but because the newly issued bill offers a higher rate, you will get a lower price for the one that you are holding because this one only pays 3%. This will become clearer when I give you some examples. I made a list of the past 22 T-bill auction results. The four week, eight week and 17 week T-bills are issued on the same day. The 13 and 26 week bills are issued on a different date, but they are issued on, together on the same day. Let's look at these freshly issued T-bills with different maturities. Which one would you be interested in buying hypothetically? Is it this 26 week bill with the highest interest rate of 4.66%? That was a trick question. Let's look at all 26 week T-bills in the past 22 auctions. These are sorted by issue date. What do you notice? The bill that was issued on October 20th had an interest rate of 4.4%. As new 26 week bills were issued, the interest rate kept increasing. So if you had locked your money in the October 20 T-bill, you would have locked an interest rate of 4.4%. Oh, and by the way, don't worry about this high rate and the investment rate. High rate is what is used in the calculation as I showed before. Investment rate is another way if you want, wanted to compare the return of the security with another bond. A chart will be easier to explain. So look at how the yields for the 26 week T-bill have risen since the beginning of this year. 
The yield was close to zero at the beginning of the year. Now it has touched about 4.5%. If you had started investing in T-bills in September, September 12th to be precise, you would have earned an annualized interest rate of about 3.5%. But look, if I add the four-week T-bill rates on here, you should be able to see that the interest rate on the four-week T-bill is now about 3.6% in October. Had you bought the 26-week T-bill in September, you would have locked a rate of 3.5% for six months. And by locked in, I don't mean that you have to hold the T-bills till maturity. These are very liquid securities. You can sell them on the secondary market, but as rates go up, the value will be lower. Just wanted to reiterate that. So now instead, if you had purchased a four week T-bill, initially you would have accrued a lower interest rate, but your money would be locked only for four weeks. And when that four week bill matures, you could have bought another four week bill with that same money at a higher rate. And then another one as this one matured and so on. So you could keep rolling over your T-bill every four weeks. And this strategy would work well in a rising rate environment. There is no way to tell for sure what the four week T-bill rates will be in the future. If the rates start to decline, you will be very happy to have bought that 26 week T-bill and lock in a higher rate. So the question to ask yourself is, what's the rate of return you need and what kind of interest rate risk you are willing to accept? And the third question to ask is, what's the opportunity cost? Because remember, when you're investing in a T-bill, you are not investing in another asset with that money because you've locked that money in a T-bill. The Fed just raised their rates and they're anticipating another increase. So if I had to guess, T-bill rates will continue to rise. And my guess is as good as yours, maybe slightly better. A strategy that works for me is to build a T-bill ladder. The way to implement this ladder is I would buy equal amounts of four, eight, and 13 week, week T-bills in week zero. When the four week T-bill matures, I would roll over that money into a 13 week T-bill. In another four weeks, when the eight, bill, eight week T-bill matures, roll over the proceeds into another th 13 week T-bill. And in another four weeks, more or less, when the 13 week T-bill matures, the first 13 week T-bill, roll it over into another 13 week T-bill. So now I have cash coming in every four weeks and I'm buying 13 week T-bills with that cash every four weeks. And let me show you my reasoning for choosing 13 weeks. I looked at the auction data and calculated the difference between the yields of eight week and four week, which is 0.29% or 29 basis points. The way I interpret this is that by taking the risk of holding a bill for four more weeks, I'm getting an additional 29 basis points. The difference between the 13 week and the eight week is also 29 basis points. So again, my four week compensation is 29 basis points. But then when I go to 17 weeks, that additional return I get is only 20 basis points. And beyond that for 26 weeks is 24 basis points. So this strategy works for me at this point. As interest rates change, I will reevaluate and determine if a shorter maturity provides a better return or if I should lock in a higher rate for a longer maturity T-bill. Like I said, this strategy is right for me based on my risk return profile and market environment right now. You need to examine yours to determine if this is right for you. Talk to a financial advisor if you're not sure. I'm not sure that the stock market has bottomed yet and the money that I'm not willing to invest in the market I will direct that into T-bills because there is no default risk, but there is interest rate risk. So remember that if you do decide to invest, make sure you understand risks of this asset class. Go watch this video next. And if you found any of this information to be of any value, please like this video and share it with other people who you want to help. I want more and more people to start investing for their family's future. As always, don't forget to be happy, to be kind, and to be your best self. Bye.